Welcome back. So you've probably seen a bunch of new videos on the Pixel 4a, and yes, it's an amazing device at a great price. But it's more significant than just a new budget phone option. If someone asks me, hey Supreet, what's a good point and shoot camera? If I go to the almighty Google and search for point and shoot camera, I get these options. And I don't think it's any of these. A point and shoot camera, you know, per the definition here, is something that I could take out, aim it, hit the trigger, and I get a photo that's amazing. And these cameras honestly require a little bit of work to get the most out of them. The best point and shoot camera today is a smartphone, and it's the Pixel 4a. For $350, nothing else comes close. It's the best point and shoot camera of 2020, and really pushes what point and shoot even means. This is a device that you buy for the camera. The phone is just a bonus. So let's go over four ways it redefines the point and shoot camera. The last one is my favorite. And yes, these features were on the Pixel 4, but at this price point, they're, they're a game changer. So the first one is HDR+, where the Pixel you know, analyzes the scene, sees what's bright and dark in the image, and takes multiple exposures to create a single photo that looks amazing. And what's great about it is that what you see is what you get. So in the viewfinder, you'll actually see it blending the images together. And it's so smart that the photo you end up with usually doesn't require any more editing. It looks great the way it is. And even point and shoots today with HDR modes really can't compete uh, with what the Pixel can do. The second is portrait mode, where the Pixel can figure out where the subject is, keep that in focus, and then blur out the background. What's cool about the Pixel is that it'll actually work on objects as well, not just on humans. And this is something that point and shoot simply couldn't do. To get that sort of blurry background, you had to use more expensive cameras with more expensive lenses. So the third one is night sight, where the Pixel will take multiple images in the dark and combine them to make it look like there's much more light around. And since the Pixel 4, you can even take photos of the stars. All you need is a tripod, you put the phone on it, go out at night, and the phone automatically detects everything and goes into astrophotography mode, and you end up with an amazing shot. This is also something that traditional point and shoot simply can't do. In all three of these cases, you don't have much control over the final image. You take what the Pixel gives you. And honestly, that's usually pretty awesome. But what if you want more creative control? That's where dual exposure comes in. Dual exposure lets you edit the shadows and the highlights while you take the image, which are simply the darkest and brightest spots of your image. And traditionally, you would have to take a photo, and then when you edit the photo, you're adjusting the shadows and highlights. But with this, what you see is what you get. As you take the image, you can change everything. It's honestly amazing, and it's almost as if you're editing the photo while you're taking the photo. And if you're interested in the technical details and how dual exposure works, I'll drop a link in the description to Google's blog where you can read all about it. And this is something a traditional point and shoot camera definitely can't do. In summary, Google has done a great job of pushing what an automatic camera can be. And in that pursuit, they've even pushed what a point and shoot camera can mean, especially with modes like night sight and dual exposure. The closest competition is the iPhone SE, and it's a great phone, but as a camera, it doesn't have two of the four features we just covered, and it costs more. Which is why I think the best point and shoot camera is the Pixel 4a. It gives you the most features for your money. So the question becomes, are compact cameras obsolete now? Since the term compact camera and point and shoot is used interchangeably. And the simple answer is no. Cameras like this, the Ricoh GR3 and the Sony ZV-1 that I'm recording on are well worth the money if you buy them for the right reasons. And I'm gonna have more videos coming on these two cameras and if they're the right fit for you. Also, not everyone wants an automatic camera experience with their phone and desire some more control. Luckily, we have options like the Sony Xperia 1 Mark II, which is one of the best manual camera experiences yet in a phone. And I'm personally a fan of both approaches, auto and manual. I think both have their strengths depending on the situation. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't already, hit the like button and subscribe if you're new to the channel. There's more insightful camera content coming. And if you decide to buy a Pixel 4a, use my link below. As a small channel, I greatly appreciate it. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.